Hello and welcome back to Little Waters. Yes, today we'll finally try to sleep. Maybe we'll wake first. Are you back with me? We are 20 seconds from the ocean floor. Yeah, same. Good. I was getting lonely in here. We are descending fast. This drop is huge. One and a half kilometers down. Let's stay focused. We have no data on the zone of the ocean. The light of clear 667 cc's three stars barely makes it this deep. I've got my headlamps on. You have to be my eyes. I want to work well my way along the slope to the northeast. We are looking for any trace of Minai or the air ROVs she sent down here. Let's get to it. Beyond the ridge of the suit slabs, the slopes descend slowly into the dark towards the abyss of the lake. The heavy currents of the upper ocean don't reach down here, leaving the water still and silent, sediment suspended in the column. A bioluminescent glow drifts through the silt, a faint but noticeable chemical blue. This veil stretches away from the tangle of the creek, reaching towards new territories. These silken creatures are almost transparent, apart from those lights. What are they? These drifting veils of material appear to be creatures of some kind. They are pulsing faintly with pink breaks of light. Though their soft, shining forms can be hard to see, this seems to mark the edge of one of the veils. In the headlamps of the suit, it, I can occasionally see a very like texture to the surface of these wood veils. What substances sustain them? The veils are gathered in groups which I am calling tangles. They seem to be intentional formations, but for what purpose? <laughs> they are famous veils which are suspended in the water. They are seeded with pink perks of bioluminescence, like the distorted star fields. The lights, the veils produce come directly from beneath their skin. They shift from transparent to light emitting in undulating waves. Between these two veils, some clear water is visible, a temporary corridor between two hydrogen sheets. A gap between the veils. Is it that these are two competing individuals or is this just the perspiration of a single group? Though tangled and without any clear sensory organs, these creatures seem to have a strong control over their position in the water. Here the tangle is receding, a few of its trailing veils hanging still in the dark water like the police limbs of a dancer. This veil is blinking the same sequence of lights over and over, 
Perhaps this is a way of attracting a curious prey into their grip. Why didn't Mina tell anyone about this place? The life here is the biggest discovery in human history. Do you think she's trying to protect it? Perhaps? But then why bring me here? Maybe she expects me to keep her secrets too. She always has her secrets, but this feels bigger than that. Studded along the veils are the remains of creatures that have been confused by the lies and caught by these transparent hunters. Away from the veils, the water returns to its inky darkness, resisting the strong beams of suits lamps. Silt has gathered around the base of two large outcrops from a natural respite from the steady downward pitch of the slopes. Dark bottled layers rise up out of the slope like fractured towers, each giant layer carrying drifts of silver silt. These dark towers of angular stones are the telltale signs of volcanic processes active under the planet's surface. What must be one of Mina's improvised remote vehicles lies twisted in the in the silt? Could it have been disabled by veils? This debris is one of Mina's RLVs. Wait, to my left, is that? Is that? Oh god. She's here. She's alive. We are reading life signs and she's breathing. That, that, that can be right. How long has she been here, lying in the silt? We have to bring her back to the base. But I don't... Okay, focus, Ellery. What do we do? We can use the RLV to boost our signal to the base and for the drone, then we can start the ascent. Get me back to the RLV debris and us up to the terminal. It's her. Okay, we are synced. Call the drone now and we need to get her out of here. back. Uh, I need to talk. I'm on the medical level. She's totally unresponsive. I don't know what to do. I don't even understand how she is still alive. I keep going back to the image of her blue silence staring out of the silk. A thin stream of bubbles flicking from her mouth. How long has she been there? The pressure alone should have crushed her at that depth. This doesn't make sense. But she's alive. I need to talk to her, but nothing. I don't understand. I want to know what is going on here. I haven't seen her in years, not since she left. And now, she is here. Do you ever imagine all the things you are going to say to a person when you see them again? No, of course you don't, a machine. Sorry. I just... I came here for her. I don't know why I did, but I did. I think it's because I had to hope for something to change, for there to be an explanation for those moments we spent together to make something again. Sorry, I know I'm not making any sense. This makes twice. Two times she turned, she stood me like upside down. Because this time I knew what I was saying myself for. 
it's not like I have anywhere else to be. The further I am from the bank cloud, the better. What comes next? We keep going. She was looking for something out here, something important enough to leave her like this. It's our turn to take that forward to find that explanation. I think she built that lab in the blue to study those mineral skeletons, artificial as she called them. But something was leading her deeper beyond the drop off. Let's start with those AOVs she sent out, maybe they found something we didn't. I'll mark the last known positions on the dive map, and I'll be here until I'm ready to go. She is still alive, and I thought I would see her again, but after she sliced the core from the base on Capra 62F and took the shuttle to God knows where, I spent weeks slowly freezing that base, waiting for the bike team to come get me. After that, it all fell apart. There was never any life on Capra 62F, I mean I had faith the whole thing. She wanted the data core she knew Baikal would provide when she gave them evidence of first contact. Baikal blamed me and my work as a consulting biologist collapsed. I limped back to Earth to take a post grad position on the tank planet. There is little need for marine biologists in a place where the only ocean life is kept in terrestrial reserves. That's where I stayed. Watching the endless exodus of humans with enough money to leave, looking out across the dead ocean at the pinpricks of the shuttle's rocket flares. At the minute I called me here, I should break her privacy, but I just want to know why. Perhaps now, if she ever wakes up, I can ask her. Red subject, Mina and Mulder, Commando state, muscle loss apparent, erratic brain activity, administering sedative. Go back here, and I would like to see what's in between those long pentacles. Okay, let's go back first. At closer inspection, these veils are jeweled with the half the digested remains of other life, passing from veil like from one veil to the next. Digested remains. White, delicate silk panels and bioluminescent cells, they work in unison to trap and digest creatures with red clothes. I'm naming these strange creatures snare veils, they are such beautiful traps. Surrounded on all sides by drifting sheets of bioluminescence, this space is a fluid, shifting, turning. The veil delivers some kind of stunning electrical shock to the suit. Is that how they disable the prey? We should be careful of contact with this species.
Winding paper from the disabled arrow leads Chris back into the sun. Unmistakably puzzled, formed in some volcanic range years ago, this outcrop is outlined by the faint light of clear 667cc sun. East of the ridge, a small rise opens into a flat plain of dimpled silt. A featureless expanse with flatly bathed with sweet slugs. An occasional silver bulb bubble breaks the surface of the flat silt, bringing a cloudy trail of sediment behind it. Repeated trails of unknown creatures mark the sand, wandering back and forth across the revealed surface. Bubbles of methane shake out from beneath the sun, creating silvery combs red of the sun. Ahead, the sweeps have created small crater craters in the seabed. Where Brian is gathering the glowy things. A shimmering landscape of ghostly pools stretches out in the lamps, the dense Brian sitting in the craters like unresting palms. Brian pools. The methane seeps here must be farming them. The pools themselves will be toxic and also anoxic, let's navigate carefully. They are beautiful, fox skin puddles sunk into the seabed, but they are dangerous. The seeps imprint the geological patterns of the underlying rock into the soil, forming both deep pools and untouched places. Patterns of dance in the sand show the paths of the feathery creatures that cross from blur to blur with slow and purposeful loops. These crawling creatures seem to keep to themselves. Let's keep track of where we find them. This crab like creature is moving slowly across the seafloor with a large transfer press protruding from its back. The waving shapes of complex fronds caress, caress the surface of the pools, sweeping the brine into wispy shapes. In closer inspection, the large translucent crest appears to be a gas built organ or bubble of some kind. Rising from the silk in the shell. The swaying fronds, are they a colony of a single creature? I'll start recording my observations. These feathery fronds are growing along the edge of the brain, waving their matted leaf like limbs through the water. Each of the many limbs of these branching creatures is carefully dipped into the brine pool. One by one, before pulling back. A mucus bubble sits in the silt, shed from the back of the bubble skin creatures which are threatening the perimeter of the pools. While some pools transition into bare sand, others are choked fronds. Occasionally, this creature will sweep its limbs back into the hairy mass of its body before thrusting them out again. What is it doing? The thick hairs of each form seem to be mottled with a reddish substance stored there amongst the hairs. A complex pattern of pools fills the seabed, shimmering with toxic chemistry. Among the pools, a pair of shining blocks rise up towards the surface. The 
bright orange carpets of martyrdom glow gathered beneath the wave of pearls stretch away from the pool. Look at something on here. Why not? When a limb is removed from the brine, the red substance melted into the hair seems to grow brighter, shifting from color. From this uh, slight elevation, the gleaming surface of a huge brine lake can be seen out to the east. The dipping motion of the fronds as they filter the brine creates a hypnotic sense of motion along the edge of the light. It seems that the substance cake into this creature's head is reacting to the brine somehow. Perhaps it, uh, perhaps it is helping them feed. A bubble, shot from the back of the creature, sits at the edge of the lake, brine flowing in its face. survive out here among the brine, most of keeping notes of their behavior. The tall, crab-like creature towers above the brine pool, an unusual assortment of rocks, shells, and bones adorn this map. These wandering creatures noisily chew away at the rock and silt of the ocean floor, filtering it for nutrients, perhaps? A faint pulsing glow like lightning in a storm can be seen beneath the cloudy brine. Here the complex of pools melts into the lake, which shines with a toxic intensity. Can anything make out of it? The spring lake is vast, I can't see the other side. What may be hiding within this its toxic rock? Do you think life might survive out here? Yes. It's true that this plant has shifted my ideas about what is survivable. Perhaps there is something out there waiting to be discovered. Branching feathery fronds which grow alongside brine pools, carefully dipping their mud and stem limbs in and out of the brine. Something else in the dark is sending slow waves to this burning beach. What could we open? The water is blinding, milky white flow in the headlands. The edge of the lake is stained with brightly colored bacterial mats which recede beneath the cloudy toxic mass of brine itself. I swear I can hear the brine eating away at the sea. The ocean floor rises back out of the bare brine to the surface of our pools. This familiar patch of high ground provides a dreamlike respite from the Milky Way with strange creatures fall across the lake. I'm seeing this creature take dead remains from the brine pool and decorate itself with them. Trophies of shell and bone. A small smooth carcass sits between the pools, half sunk in sand. Could this island be a refuge for children in the future? has shed his bubble crest out of this desolate island. The carrier is nowhere to be seen, perhaps lost to the brain. From the small pool at the lake's edge, a pale blue pool is flashing. I swear I see lights blinking in the spots out above the brine lake. Uh. 
The sun between the pools surrounds down into the lake. Is this island being so salt or is it just my problem? Is there anything out there? I see both shapes in the air. Pale beacons flicker across the lake. What are those? The sharp shapes of the mains just jut out from the pale brine like mountains peak below the clouds. The edge of the lake are like miniature landscapes of craters and oceans. A thin slab of basil juts out from the brain pool, providing a tiny season from the tops of liquid. This small bank of soil is slowly slipping away beneath the cloudy surface of the brine pools. Hemmed in by toxic pools, this small rise looks out across a landscape of deep craters of burning life and darkness. The mucus bubble shed from the back of a creature sits on the top of a small pile of seals and sits at the right of the A radial pattern of depressions in the rock suggests that we is moving outwards from the impact point. These aren't sea pools, something impacted the sea from here. And yours? But how do they get so deep? Or could it some creature have left these? A tiny, thin strip of sand pushes out to the lake surrounded by toxic pools. Wool smears glow faintly on the remains piled on the strider's back. This bioluminescent creatures or chemical phenomena. This lake is bigger than any ship I've seen on Earth. The volume of methane trapped in the bedrock must be impossibly vast. Between the wall of the ridge and the corridor shelf is a white strip of pale and silver silk. The haze lifting from the lake and the pools all around make visibility very poor. Vague shapes feel lit in and out of columns of bubbles. Pools like fog cauldrons mottle the seafloor, bacteria must bring bright smears of color to the sea. Among the ordered fronds, I can see the neon orange of microbial carpet spinning out from the pool in a complex growth patterns. And I think this is a good place to end this part, so for now, thank you very much, stay alive, and see you soon. Bye!